Hello, and welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. Many, many thanks to using to click on my thumbnail and to watch my content. Very much appreciated as always. Okay, so as you can tell from the thumbnail, uh, I'm going to have a go at painting the Glaive Wraith Stalkers from the Warhammer Age of Sigmar painting set. Uh, you may have already seen my uh, other video where I, I did my own colour scheme um, on the uh, My Mom Banshees. Quite happy how they came out actually. Uh, figure painting is my nemesis, so uh, I'm, I'm still learning. Even though I've been modelling on and off all my life, it's it's one of my uh, uh, struggling points is figure painting. But I was happy how they came out, so I thought, right, let's crack on and get some more painted up. Now, if you've got this this set, uh, you get a set of uh, four figures. They are your Glaive Wraith Stalkers along with all the paints that you need and a paintbrush. So, as I said before in the previous video, I did my own colour scheme uh, because everybody in the dog seemed to be doing the white with the, you know, the, the night hall gloom uh, sort of mixed in together in it. I just wanted to get away from that myself and have a bit of fun with them. But for this box, I will be using the paint scheme on the back. That is uh, what they're advising. So for this one, I'm gonna have a go at using their paint scheme. Right, so without further ado, I'm gonna go along and build up the four little figures that come along with the box. Um, I'll tell you the pros and cons with doing those. I'm not gonna show you the video and we're putting them together because there are a million and one videos on YouTube already showing you how to fit two pieces of plastic together and they're not hard so uh, I'm going to pop along I'm going to get on with that and then we can continue with the rest of the video right so here we go that's your four Gleave Wraith Stalkers all made up now the box itself doesn't come with any instructions so if you're new to uh, to modeling or to Warhammer gaming or doing these kind of figures if you go on to the uh, Games Workshop website there are actually instructions on there on how to fit them together uh, point to, for you to look out about as well is uh, this little chap here because you've got the option to either have him with a pike or you can have them holding a drum so he could be the drummer. So uh, there's the option for you. You don't have don't have to go with a pike holder. So you do have an option there, and you don't not really made aware of that until uh, you're actually starting to put the figures together. So you may want them holding the drum. I wanted uh, him holding the pipe because I do have another set of these in uh, the Age of Sigmar starter set. So I'll probably build the, the next one up the drums so that's enough of that waffle anyway uh the fairly easy push fit together i would advise actually using some glue uh i use to me extra thin because i find it to be really really easy to use um and it's a lot cleaner than a lot of the other adhesives that you can buy um what i did find with these is to say the push fit that you really have to push hard to fit them together so what i would do is on the uh, connecting pin inside get a sanding stick and just lightly rub around the outside of that just to take off you know probably the you know the 
the finest bit off the top. We're not talking. We're not even talking millimeters here. You know, it's just to uh, smooth it round a bit, just to make it a little smaller. And also, get your craft knife and the locating hole that the pin goes into. Just go around the inside, and it makes it a lot, lot easier for them to fit together. Now, as you can see on this one, I have had to use filler because the seam line there, it was a gap. It wasn't a seam line, it was a gap. So I had to use my Vallejo filler. Uh, you know, with the forethought, what I should have done really was on the locating pin, probably got the sanding stick and took probably a millimetre off the end of it because I do think it's the locating pin inside that's not making these go flush together. So if you haven't made yours up yet, that could be an idea as well. Plus on the bases, trying to push the figures into the base it is really, really a tight fit. So I would absolutely advise um, widening the holes just a little bit, like I say, sanding around the pin itself, just to make it so you can put put it on easy, but uh, you've still got a bit of grip there. But like I say, you will be using uh, a glue anyway, to keep them into place. So when you've done, you have your four figures, like I said, I've already gone round with the uh, Vallejo uh, modeling putty. Um, I've said, I've told you about that in the past uh, because it is, um, it's an acrylic putty, which means that when you put, put it along the line there, whatever you're filling, you can clean it up with a damp cotton board, take it off straight away. Or what I have done here is, as well, I used a paintbrush, a wet paintbrush to just run along the line because it does dissolve the putty just a little bit that it will go into the gap and fill the gap and that's a lot cleaner than using your regular uh, modeling filler which you may have seen other people use uh, where you have to put it on and then you have to sand it all back because there is some really really fine detail on these figures that you don't want to be going around with a sanding stick or sanding paper or anything like that and I think the Vallejo uh, putty uh, is the way to go on little figures like this. So we've gone all the building, um, we've filled uh, the, uh, the join lines best we can. So next job to do is to prime them. I'm going to be using a Humbrol Acrylic Grey Primer. It's just the one I've always used uh, for my modeling. And I think because we're using dark colors on here as well, it'll, it'll be fine on that. Um, Two reasons for using a primer. One, it gives you the base coat which you need for your acrylic paints uh, to, uh, to adhere to. You get a better finish. And two, it shows up uh, shows up a lot of little problems with, that you may have. So you may look at that that there on the filler and think, yeah, that's filled up. And then when you prime it, you'll notice that it needs just a little bit more. Now you want to be doing that at the primer stage and not at the stage when you put in your first base coats down because you have to fill it and sand it back and whatever. So it just saves you a little work there. So, right, got to that stage. I'm now going to uh, pop the gloves on, pop a mask on, take them outside with the rattle can. And next time you see me, these little fellas will all be primed. Right, what I did first was I used my usual primer, which is the Humeral Grey primer. It's my primer of choice. Used it from the rattle can, it makes it so much easier and quicker than hand painting them. <clears throat> so that meant onto the first stage I was going to use the uh, paint guide that comes with the painting set so I put the base colours down now this included using the Nighthawk gloom and um, that was for the lower half of the, the figures 
And for the cloak on the top half, I use the Incubi Darkness, as it states. That gives you a, a sort of a two-toned effect. And it makes it a little bit more interesting as well. Uh, also, I painted in uh, some of the brown, which was the staff for their weapons, uh, a little bit of brown on the bases where it was mainly earth. And uh, as you can see as well that uh, I used some flesh tones. I'm just looking up what it was called. It is Raycar Flesh that I have in another set. And uh, that was all the base coats down. Moving on to the next slide. I then decided to do a little bit of weathering. Uh, that just included just do a little bit of dry brushing. Uh, I used the Celestra Grey for the dry brush just to pick out where the highlights were. I also used some, uh, I think it's light, light US Navy Grey for the stonework as another base coat on the bases. That was all done on the stonework. Uh, I used lead balcher on their uh, bladed weapons. Uh, I didn't look like, like the look of them being uh, pristine and silver, so that will have to be remedied in the next stage, which was using washers. Now I used Agrax Earthshade for, for washers. Uh, I used it on all the parts. That's all the body on the you know, the uh, flesh tone parts, also onto the base. Uh, what I did notice as well that uh, when it had dried, the Celestial Grey didn't stand out as much as I wanted it to. So I did a, a dry dry brush uh, with some white paint on top of that. It was the uh, the Citadel white that you get, um, and that made it stand out a lot better. I didn't go in too heavy with it because I wanted uh, some of the grey still to contrast with the white, so it's just little bits and bobs, but it did make the uh, the highlights stand out a lot better. Also, on the blades, what I did, I used some of my Humbral Rust Effect Powder. Um, now, that on its own is just two orange, so what I did then was I used some brown Humbral Wash over the top of that, just a smidgen you don't want too much uh, wipe it and it does give you an excellent rust look effect and I think it's made uh, the uh, the weapons look a lot better so after that the next next stage was just detail painting on the bases um, picking out the red flowers there were some leaves on the floor that looked like they'd fallen so what I did with them I painted them in the rust colour when I went over them with the Agrax Earthshade, it made them look brown like they were the dried and the desiccated. Uh, just a bit more dry brushing here and there. And then I went round the base, uh, the outside of the base, with a bad and black just to smarten it all up. And this is the final reveal.
And here they are. So, these little fellas finally painted up. Uh, I'm going to try and keep them in focus as much as I can. It's like I've said before, my camera on my laptop isn't the best. But I uh, really enjoyed painting these little figures, as usual. This is Bert. Hello, Bert. <laughs> course there's Ernie and as always I apologize for my shakes one thing I found about these figures because they're fantasy figures uh, reality for the most part can go out the window so you can have a bit of fun with them which is what I've done I've stuck to the uh, ad painting advice uh, for the most part but you know I'll give my own little little twist on it is Eric. <laughs> there he is. I think these might have names, but I can't can't remember them for the life of me. Now I don't know if you think the same, but uh, me and Claire thought the same. Dark Crystal, Skeksis, a little bit of plagiarism going on there. Games Workshop. Hmm. And the last part, oh, there's Eric. Got a right wobble on Eric there, aren't they? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, of course, I forgot to mention as well, I've given them two coats of matte varnish out of the rattle can. <coughs> this is because they are going to be used for gameplay, so they're going to be picked up a lot, they're going to be handled a lot. So, you need, really need at least two coats uh, of a matte varnish to protect your paintwork or else it's just going to end up rubbing off and when you're putting them in and out of whatever box container you keep them in as well that'll uh, minimize you know rubbing and chipping of paint um, like i say i use a, a humbrol uh, matte varnish out of the spray you can get it and do use it with a brush but i find when i use the brush i end up getting white when it dries in the crevices and that drive me up the wall. So I always use the one from the rattle can. So there you go. That's my uh, final reveal for the Glaive Wraith Stalkers. Really enjoyed painting them. And I'm looking forward to getting to painting my next lot of Warhammer figures. And that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel. It'd be very much appreciated. And also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell.